Hi, it's Miles from Chorley Group Go EV. Today, I'm going to show you the interior of the Aura Funky Cat. I'm going to go through every single button press, show you how you can configure the driver's display, go through all the different trip options. We're going to go to the infotainment system, show you the internet radio, all the different ways you can get audio systems, uh, Bluetooth, uh, USB, USB video, DAB, FM, etc. Uh, we're going to go through all of the uh, safety features that are built into the car and how you can temporarily disable some of them if you want to. Um, and basically how you can configure the car to be comfortable for you. Uh, we'll show you all this. It's going to be quite a long video, but you might want to skip through to the bits that you find interesting. Hope you enjoy. So first of all, we're going to go through these buttons here on the right-hand side of the steering wheel, um, and they control the screen which is directly in front of the driver. So a home button brings you back to the home screen. The home screen has got a number of different options on it. Um, so on the right hand side here you'll see where it says zero kilowatts power and total mileage. That's the total mileage the car's driven. So this is only car's only done 213 miles since it was new. Uh, if we press the down arrow, so on the right hand side display we've got up, down, left, right, we've got an OK in the middle of it and then we've got a like a, a return back met button as well. If you use the down arrow we can cycle through different displays. So this is like trip meters. So we've got after start so this is after the vehicle was started this morning. So I've done 49.7 miles in the car today, an average speed of 24 miles an hour. If we go down again, that's total driving time. Uh, that total driving time is the total time as well. Um, so let's go back to it. Uh, the after start, that's total driving time, total car time the car's been switched on. So if we've been parked up and filming this video, for example, that time is going to continue going on. And that's going to affect your um, average speed as well because you parked up and its speed is zero. If we go down again, we've got after resetting, so you can reset a different trip effectively and have your own reset trip. It's either long-term or whatever you want it to be. To reset it, you just hold down the OK button. And that's gonna come up uh, with a couple options. So we can go down to reset, journey info, and press OK. And then press the back button, and that's going to reset that trip. If we go down again, Obviously driving time since resetting is zero because we've just done it. Uh, we've got tyre pressures on here and how warm the tyres are. So it's quite a cool day today. Um, tyre pressures all around sort of 35, 37 psi. Um, they're measured by sensors which are built into the wheels themselves. And if you go down further again, you've got economical driving guidance. This little bar, um, the blue segments go over to best when you're driving well or you're not using much power. And it goes over to worst if you're accelerating hard and basically driving it a bit hard. And that watt hours per mile, so that's the efficiency of the car. Normally, um, other electric vehicles, apart from Teslas, um, usually use uh, miles per kilowatt hour, which is obviously the inverse of that. But uh, we've got watt hours per mile. So 296 watt hours per mile, that's around 3.2, 3.3 uh, miles per kilowatt hour. So that's based on us driving. Um, between sort of three to seven degrees today in the rain. So it's not bad efficiency actually for driving at, you know, at A road and motorway speeds. If we go down again, it shows drivetrain. Now if we're driving, this would show acceleration, deceleration. It shows the power going to the motor, from the battery to the motor and from wheels back to the battery if it's doing regenerative braking. And pass it again, we'll go back to this menu. Now if we use the left and right arrows, that brings up a couple of extra options we've got um, one where it shows us the radio station currently um, and so that can show us uh, yeah, what you're currently playing or if you're playing a Bluetooth music or radio or whatever. This is actually internet radio that's on at the moment. Um, if you move it across again, this gives you your recent call list from your mobile phone. So my mobile phone isn't currently paired but if I pair it up briefly um, you should see that information coming through on there. There we go. So you can see through your previous call history. Press your right arrow again, normal and private mode. This is an interesting thing, this changes how the car saves information. If you have it in normal mode, then when you use the satellite navigation and things like that, it will store it in its history as a place you visited. If you put it onto private mode and select that, it changes the map so that it doesn't store, it doesn't show any of the previous history of journeys that have been done. Um, so it, it's useful perhaps if you were to um, I don't know, if you're, if you're lending your car to somebody, and, uh, or like for example we have here, we have test drives, um, 
we don't necessarily want people knowing where our home address is, for example, so I can have it in normal mode for me and then I switch to private mode. When people get in the car, they won't see any of that information um, as we're driving. Move the arrow across again, it goes back to the power gauge. So that's your um, menu set up on the right hand side. You'll see around the display there, we've got the bottom left corner, we've got the power meter, effectively the battery power, how far it thinks it can drive based on what is remaining in the car. Above that, we've got the speed uh, that we're currently driving. You'll see that it's got a little round circle with some dashes in, that's the speed camera detection. So if we drive along the, the car, you'll see that will actually pick up the road signs. It'll tell you what the speed is for that area. And you can also, war the car also can warn you um, if you are driving over the, the speed limit. Um, so if you're driving, for example, 34 in a 30, it can actually warn you and say, um, warning the speed limit is 30 miles an hour, you're currently driving in excess of that. At the top of the screen, uh, it says normal, because that's the driving mode we're in. If you press the uh, power mode button, which is down here on the right hand side, it goes to sport mode. Press it again, it goes to eco. Press it again, it goes to auto mode, which basically means that depending on how you're driving, it's, it'll affect how much power or not it gives you. Um, and press it again, it goes back to normal mode. So that's cycled using the little button on the right hand side by your knee. In the middle it says P, that's park. Uh, if we put it into gear, uh, twist the gear, you'll see it goes to D mode. If I twist it the other way, it goes to reverse. If I press the centre button, it says park. Uh, current time, 11.36am, and uh, it says I've not got my seatbelt on, um, so obviously I need to put that on. So that's the display you can have on the, on the driver's display. Now you can actually change the way this looks. Using the controls on the, on the um, infotainment system, if we press this four square button here, and then go to um, system settings and then to individual, you'll see that we can change it between this digital mode that we're in at the moment, minimalist mode, where it gets rid of a lot of the information apart from the speed, or ADAS mode. ADAS mode is where it's going to show you um, the self driving feature. So, as we're driving down the motorway, for example, that's sort of the view that you would have. It looks very similar to the digital mode. Um, the only difference between the two is that on the digital mode it gives you like a graphic um, increase on the right hand side uh, and the left hand side for your speed and also for your um, effect of the power, like a rev counter, so as it goes up in a green bar um, that's your power going into the motor. As you accelerate hard it will then turn to red to show you you're using a bit too much power. Um, so that's on the digital mode. So which you prefer is that you can just switch between them using this centre display. That's no problem at all. Um, we can also customise these buttons. So one button I haven't mentioned is on the uh, right hand side of the steering wheel here. We've got a little asterisk button. Uh, and on the left hand side we've got a plus button. And they're set up in this menu as well. So this, uh, right, this star button on the right hand side here can be used for, uh, as a, like a smart key, shortcut for either switching on the 360 panoramic view cameras or we can press it and I've currently got it set as um, air conditioning auto mode so that means that if I press this button it brings up the it automatically switches to the air conditioning to auto setting uh, if it was previously switched off um, or if I previously set other settings like demist or whatever it'll override that and just say it's the automatic you know uh, climate control um, so that's my setting I've got on there, but you can also have play favourite radio station. So if you've got it set as a favourite, uh, Radio 2 for example, as your favourite station, then you're able to um, actually set that up on here so that no matter what anyone's been listening to in the car before, you can press that button, it will automatically load Radio 2 for you. Um, on the left hand side, the steering wheel button can be used for the same three functions. So I've got the left hand side set up for 360 panoramic view and the right hand version set up for air conditioning automatic mode. Okay, um, that's all of the features on the right hand side of the steering wheel for the driver's dash. Uh, let's take a look at what we can do with the centre console using the left hand buttons. So quite sensibly, or is split it up so that uh, one half of the steering wheel buttons control this screen, this half control this screen. So looking at the buttons on the left hand side of the steering wheel now, we've got a similar sort of up, down, left, right, um, and a central sort of select button uh, on here as well. Uh, we've also got a mute uh, audio button, we've got a speech button, and we've got this shortcut button, the plus button um, that I mentioned before. So uh, these control this screen, so if we're using um, the up-down arrows, we can change the volume. So 
So yeah, up and down will increase the volume. Or down. Um, if we do left and right, that can skip between different radio stations. If we press the mute button, that pauses it or mutes it, uh, depending what system you listen to. Uh, the center button, button to select, or if we uh, press the speech button, then that enables us to use the voice recognition features, which we'll come on to later. So that controls your volume and your track list, it tracks up and down and things. The rest of the buttons are done via the touch screen. So talk about the home screen first of all. So if you press the home button, um, it's got a choice between two screens here. You'll see we've got this home screen where it shows online multimedia, press the home button again, that then brings up your navigation. Um, on the home screen, you'll see that we've got uh, online multimedia. So this, is, this car's got a SIM card built into it. It's got 4G network connection. And this can actually use that network connection to give you access to, for example, Deezer, which is a bit like Spotify. You need to have an account for this. Um, so I don't have an account, so I guess I can't show you that. Press the home button again. Uh, we've got Reuters News. Um, which again is like an internet audio based system, but it's also got um, full website, we've got videos on there. So if you've parked up, you could look, at, look through the news if you wish. If we go back to the home, we've got Radio Line. Now, Radio Line is internet radio, and this is actually quite comprehensive. Um, so you'll see on here, we've got uh, on disk, if you go to the home tab up here, that shows you all these stations you've got. Uh, it gives you access to podcasts as well. Um, there's loads and loads of different uh, stations on there. But more than that, more than just your normal sort of Radio 1, Radio 2, you know, Heart and all those sort of radio stations that you can see on there. Um, we can actually do this on like a global basis. So if you click Discover, you can actually choose a different country on here. Um, and it's got countries from all over the world. So, for example, um, my wife is from Poland, so if we scroll through to, uh, to Poland, then we can listen to RMFFM, No Lipsha Musica, um, Eska Rock. We've got all these sort of uh, localised uh, national TV uh, radio stations that you can listen to. So if you're an expat and you've moved to the UK, you've got access to various other radio channels from around the world to give you... Uh, We've got America, we've got Canada. Um, so if you're looking on this, you know, if you've got uh, access to ESPN, for example, um, so all these different, the Z100 uh, New York channel, all these different channels from all around the world. So that's a kind of a cool feature. And actually, my experience so far with the internet radio is that it actually works probably more reliably than DAB signal where I live. Um, so I live in the Yorkshire Dales. Often the DAB signal is quite patchy, um, but actually having the uh, the radio built in here and using the internet radio actually seems to work um, very well indeed. So I forgot to press the home menu. We go back to the home screen. Um, you have also got obviously DAB, FM and AM radios uh, on here and you can store things as favourites for example. So we can store Radio 2 here. Um, Bluetooth music, if you want to stream music from your phone. Uh, USB music, you can use a USB drive, put some MP3s on there. And you can even play USB videos. So if you wanted to, you can have a USB file uh, with a movie on, for example. And so if you know that you're going to be uh, doing a longer journey where you're going to involve some charge stops where you stop for about you know 30 to 40 minutes, you could catch up some on some uh, episodes of your favourite TV series. So, uh, so that's quite cool. Feature that's, that's your multimedia, your sound system on there. Um, the next button down, so press the button on here again, that gives you access to the navigation. Now the built-in navigation is actually very good. Um, you can tap to search and, and type things in. Um, as you'll see, it's got points of interest on here. EV charging stations, car parks, hotels, etc. Um, all sorts of different things you can search for on there. Um, but one of the things you can do as well is you can do a, a, ver a voice search. I can clear history as well in here. So you could, using the voice control button on the steering wheel, press that. 
navigate to Chorley Nissan Burnley. Burnley, England, United Kingdom, right. Okay. Okay, Burnley, England, United Kingdom. So it sets the route. There we go. Please follow actual traffic regulations. So that's quite uh, a cool feature. So you don't necessarily need to press buttons and things. You can just use the sp speak function, tell it where you want to go, and, uh, and it will get you there. So that's useful. Um, quit out of that. So just to show you that again. So if you do have a, a navigation um, set, um, it gives you different routes on here. I'll tell you how much battery you'll have by the time you get there, based on how it thinks you're gonna, you've been driving recently. Um, we can move around here and we can zoom in and out as you'd expect to, like it being a touch screen. So that's quite cool. And turn it around. So yeah, there's lots we can do. Uh, the built-in navigation is actually very good. And obviously if you set a route on this, then it, it also mirrors the routes up on the other screen. Um, so your driver can see them dead ahead as well. So that's cool. Um, let's just have a quick look at uh, the next button down. So we've got home. The next button down is these four squares over here. Um, and we've got mobile phones, so we can pair our phones on there, for example. So we click on that, we can see all of our contacts. Um, if we go back to um, vehicle settings, so vehicle settings menu. There's quite a lot in this, so let's go to the, let's go from the start and, and work our way down. So uh, frequently used is where it'll pick up a couple of different things. So you can change how heavy the steering is, for example. So you can have it light or lighter steering if you prefer easier steering if you're driving in the city or if you want a slightly heavier feel you can set it to sport i've set it to comfort which seems to be okay um, you can turn off the traction control here um, i don't need to do that right now but that's where you do it um, if you go to in car on the right hand side of the dashboard here up on the a pillar we've got this uh, little box sticking out of the side which is the driver monitoring system now this driver monitoring system um, has a suite of different things that it can look for when you're driving. It's basically trying to keep a watchful eye on you, making sure that you aren't falling asleep, aren't having a medical episode, and that you're safe in the car. And if it, if it thinks that you are getting tired, it can warn you. So it's got distraction monitoring. So if you frequently are looking out of your mirrors, out your window, sorry, and you know searching all around the car, not really looking where you're going, it will warn you that you are um, you need to focus on the road ahead. Fatigue monitoring, um, it basically looks at your driver's eyes. If it sees your eyelids getting a bit heavy and it's starting to yawn, it will warn you and that you perhaps need to take a break. We actually had this with one of the drivers and it suggested after twice that he would yawned, it suggested that uh, he actually pulled up a list of, of, of possible places, you know, rest areas. And dangerous behavior monitoring, um, it says basically if you're, um, if it notices that you're picking up a phone and answering it, which hopefully wouldn't see you, but if you were picking up a phone and answering it and making, um, if you're doing things dangerous like that, um, it would warn you that, you know, that's not ideal to be doing whilst you're driving. It's also got biometric identification. Um, well, that basically means it uses facial recognition. So um, if you set your um, user profile in the Aura app um, and, take, and show a photo of yourself in that app, then it will recognize you when you get in. It can use that function to um, set your uh, radio station to the favorite radio station you have, for example. Um, it can set various different internal features, the temperature that you like it to be, that sort of thing, based on it recognizing that it's, in this case, it's miles driving the car. Delayed shutdown is basically so that when you've turned off the car and you, you know, you're finished, it will leave the car switched on until you've locked the vehicle, basically. Next button across the top, we've got wireless charging. So there's a wireless charger in the center console here. It shows in this case, it's currently charging. You can switch the wireless charger off if you want. I don't know why you want to do that, but you can, uh, yes, yeah, so you can have a wirelessly charged device in that center console area. We can, if it's not working, check it, check there that it's switched on. Click down to body. And this is where we can set whether unlocking the car unlocks all of the doors or just the driver's door only, depending on your preference. We can set an auto lock, either switch it off 
um, so that the doors stay unlocked unless you physically lock them. Or you can have it automatically lock at either five miles an hour or, or nine miles an hour. Um, when you put the vehicle into park mode, it can automatically unlock the car at that point and ultrasound theft detection that's part of the alarm system basically, that's uh, useful. Side mirrors, you can have it so that it automatically folds the side mirrors when you lock the car. Um, or you can have it manually so that if you don't like it folding the mirrors, you can have it manually and then there's a button on the driver's door where you can adjust that if you wish. And the front wiper, effectively this is the sensitivity, if you will, of the intermittent feature. So you can basically say how long you want it to wait between wipes of the windscreen. So if you find that it's wiping too, fre too frequently, you can fine tune it in here. Next menu is lighting. If we go down that, uh, we've got the find vehicle lighting. That means when you unlock the car, um, it's going to uh, flash the headlights and, and draw your attention to the vehicle. You can turn that off if you like. Dome light delay, so that's how long the internal light stays on for uh, in the center console. Uh, follow me home headlights, so you can set how long after you've got out of the vehicle the headlights stay on for. And parked car alert mode, if you've lost your car, you can press the button on the app to find my car. You can choose whether it's going to flash the headlights. Um, it says whistle, it means use the horn or whether it's going to use the horn and flashlights at the same time. Moving down to driving, uh, energy recovery level. So you can choose whether you want that to be light, normal or strong. I've got it set to strong. I quite like a strong regenerative braking when I take my foot off the accelerator. Um, I find that quite useful. So that's what I've set that to. AC automatic limit. So that's for the auto cruise control. So you can set it that that is uh, automatically going to limit you to the speed limit that you're currently driving at. So for example, if you enter a, if you've been in a 70 zone and you dropped into a 60 zone, you can tap a one button, it'll, it'll flick from 70 down to 60. Uh, Eco Plus, this is if you want to be a real miser with your energy. If you turn that off, it basically turns off, if you put Eco Plus mode on, it basically makes it so that the car won't exceed 60 miles an hour and the air conditioning system is turned off. So if you want to sort of hyper mile and see how many miles you can possibly get to the car, that's where we'd do that. Single pedal mode. This is like in the Nissan Leaf and other electric vehicles, one pedal moding, mode driving. So single pedal mode, that basically means that when you come off the accelerator, it will effectively put the braking on for you. So it's, like, it's as if your feet are transitioning from left to right and back again you see, automatically. So you come off the accelerator, it automatically puts the brakes on, it'll put the brake lights on. If you push your foot hard on the accelerator, then obviously it'll override the brake brakes. So it just means that you can just use the accelerator pedal alone, and that will mean that you, you can basically come to a complete stop just by taking your foot off the accelerator. So it's like one on from regen. It will, it will automatically use regenerative braking, but it will also use friction brakes as well to bring the car to a complete stop. We've got another shortcut here for the stability control. We saw that up on the favorites earlier. And again, the power assisted steering can choose the heaviness here. Under parking mode, we've got low speed uh, auto braking. So uh, that's switched on. So basically in the event of it seeing pedestrians, etc., whilst you're trying to do a parking maneuver, it, the car can use the brakes to stop you from running people over basically. Automatic blind spot camera. So basically as you're um, making a turn at a low speed, it can bring in cameras to either show you your um, your near side wheel or your offside wheel um, side of the vehicle it gives you like a 360 camera view as well you can select the speed at which it will turn off the cameras so if you're going above nine miles an hour or above 19 miles an hour as to what point it will stop putting them on this screen here on intelligent driving uh, we've got various options we can uh, select or deselect so lane assist we can choose whether we want it to be lane keep assist which means it centers you in the lane or lane departure warning, where it just warns you if you start to veer from one side to the other. Um, emergency steering function. So again, if it senses an accident occurring, it can try and steer you out of the way. If it senses that you're not paying attention to the road and it feels that you're not going to turn enough for that corner to be able to survive, it will try and steer you around the corner um, and keep you in the lane as safe as possible. Smart dodge is for object avoidance. Again, it can if it needs, if it senses that there's something in the road ahead that you're going to crash into, it can try and mitigate that by dodging out of the way. And you can choose whether it alerts you as you cross the lines, the white lines, by the vibration or a beep or a vibration and a beep together. And you can change the sensitivity of the detection on there as well.
So if you find that it's cutting in too often, you can knock it down to low sensitivity. Uh, we've also got, so this is a lane assist because I was looking at this last, but actually we've got front assist. So we can see auto emergency braking on here. We can choose that, whether that's switched on and off. All of these are required for the uh, NCAP five star safety rating. So if we turn these off, it actually turns itself back on next uh, time we get in the car and start the car. So um, it's not possible to switch these safety features off permanently. They're only switched off on that, effectively on that key turn, on that time that you're driving the car. And the forward collision sensitivity you can adjust as well. Intelligently passing the turn. So if someone is uh, making a turn ahead of you and you're going to, uh, if they're turning to the left, for example, and you're going to swerve around to the right to avoid them, uh, that means it won't do the emergency braking. It knows that you're going to do that turn. Side and rear assist. So we've got blind spot monitoring, door open warnings, rear collision warnings, rear cross traffic alert and rear cross traffic braking. So if you're reversing out of a space and a car seems to want to drive past you and as you're reversing out of space, it can brake the car actually to stop you hitting them. Traffic assist. So we've got traffic sign recognition. Uh, we can warn you if you're going over the driving speed. So if it's at 60 mile an hour limit and you're going 70, it'll warn you. Cruise speed limit, we can set it so that, it, again, it automatically limits you to the road speed. So you can't set it, for example, set that you want to do your cruise control at 80 miles an hour in a 70 zone. Um, and we can set the sensitivity of at what point that will um, give us an alarm. So at what point it's going to warn us that we're going to that limit. So those are all within intelligent driving. And then if we go to reset, that will reset all the vehicle settings to the factory. So if you've played with all of these and you can't remember where they all go, reset it and it'll go back to the beginning. Okay, so that's vehicle settings. Under system settings, this is where we've got access to, again, sort of things to do with the display here. So wireless LAN, the car has got wireless connection built in. This is for the car to connect to a wireless network, not for you to use the car as a hotspot. So uh, you can select the network and then put in the password and that will then enable it to do things like internet searches, um, quicker. So if you're in an area where the 4G signal isn't working, you could, for example, piggyback onto a wireless network to be able to do map searches and, and, and audio and you can use your internet radio and so on. Um, on the sound system, so we can change the volume levels of navigation, speech, media, call. We can change the volume at the startup um, to be adaptive so it's not automatic. If somebody's left it on full whack last time, it's not going to um, break your ears when you first get in and turn the car on. Obviously, turning the sound down whilst using navigation, um, you can have it so that it automatically announces whoever's calling you. If it's stored in your phone, so if I've got uh, my son Anthony saved in my phone, for example, it would announce it as Anthony and his mobile number or not. Um, system sound effects, so there's various animations and sound effects when we turn on the car. Uh, I quite like those, I'm going to leave those on. We've got vehicle warning sounds. Uh, we can turn how loud we want those. So we can turn those down a bit perhaps if we want to. And speed sensitive vol volume control. So as we're going faster and faster, the higher road noise will mean that uh, the stereo can turn up to match that so that we're not being drowned out by road noise. Sound effects. So the car's got DTS audio built in, which is quite advanced. We can choose whether we want the uh, audio to be uh, for the whole car, or if it's just the driver on their own, we can have it so that it centers it around the driver so it gives a slightly clearer dri uh, audio for the driver themselves. There's two pedestrian warning sounds you can have on the car. And there is an equalizer, but if you've got DTS switched on, then you can't adjust the equalizer. But if you turn that off, then you come down here, you can change the treble, uh, mids, bass, etc. And uh, we can reset that. Go to voice assistant, we can choose uh, our default wake up word, which is hello aura. Um, I'm listening. There you go, you see, she works. Um, and we can change the word, we could change that to different things. So say for example, you happen to have somebody who lives with you who's called Laura. It might be that in your accent that, the, uh, that that sounds a lot like hello aura. So by changing the custom wake up word, that would avoid that issue. Uh, we can change... System language is already Serena. So we can change our uh, volumes and things. Uh, these are some of the things that we can ask her to do. And we can say, and that will... Um, so you see there's a, a variety of all different uh, things we can use. 
I've tended, I've used it so far for putting the windows up and down, but there's and navigating to places. But there's actually all sorts of stuff that you can do, and so this gives you examples of what you can do. And I've asked her two sums as well, um, and that because I was trying to calculate how much the total range of the car would be, and based on the miles per watt hour or whatever, and that all and they did all that as well. So that's cool. Display, uh, we can change the brightness of the screens here. Um, we can also uh, choose whether it automatically changes from dark to light based on the headlights. Uh, so if we put it into dark mode, all the screens will go dark, obviously. That happens automatically based on the outside ambient light. Or if you want, you can have it let's see, on auto, which means it's light during the day, it's dark at night. Time formats, time zones, languages, units, whether you want metric or imperial, tire pressures, etc. Uh, this individual screen, this is where we change the, the driver's dash here to so what we want it to look like and also change those steering wheel customizations. At the bottom here, the system, we can uh, check for updates. Uh, it does get all over the air updates for things like improvements to the infotainment system, um, when um, uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay licenses switch on. Hopefully in the next month or so, they will come over the air updates as well. But we can check for updates on here. If you go to privacy and security, this is where you can make sure, this is where you set, set if you want the online voice and everything. So once you've set up the car, you select all these options for voice, location sharing, etc., and then that enables it to use a lot of the features from the app, like the Find My Car feature. And if you want to reset the system, that's done in here as well. Back to the home button. Uh, we've got my account, uh, so this is where we can log in with our own personal account and uh, we'll have inform uh, information that will tie in from the app to here. Um, the power assistant shows us how much power is currently being used, the instantaneous energy consumption, so how much we're using power using at the moment, obviously zero because we're not going anywhere, the range based on how we've been driving so far, and the average energy consumption, AEC's average energy consumption, so how far it can, it's been averaging per 100 miles. So based on the figures you see here, we're looking at a total range really of around sort of 160, 170 miles when it's, I say, sort of, you know, February, it's uh, March, it's, it's, you know, sort of, it's three degrees this morning, it's seven degrees now, it's not warm, it's been raining. So in sort of, you know, wintry, early spring, late autumn, that's sort of 160, 170 miles is, is sort of the typical range. In summer you'll get up to the, the 193 miles official range. On charging management we can set uh, scheduled charging. So scheduled charging so we can start when we say when we want our charging to start and finish. Um, we can also, this button here, this warming and cooling settings, in particularly cold weather, like when it's below minus five, or when it's really, really hot above 30 degrees, which we're not going to really get in the UK, you can turn this on so that then if the car's plugged in, even if it's finished charging, it can come back on to use the power to cool or warm the battery as appropriate so that when you get in the car, the battery's conditioned to the right temperature. We can also set how much we want it to charge as a maximum. Now, day-to-day -day driving, if you're charging on a daily basis, and you're not using the full range of the vehicle, you can charge to 80%. That actually is, is healthier for the battery. Um, ideally, lithium-ion batteries don't like being stood at 100% for a long period of time. So if you're going to do um, the, you know, if you're going to be charging regularly and using the car regularly, but not using the full range, you don't need 170 miles on a daily basis, then you're better off charging it to 80%. That will help the battery last longer. Having said that, if you're doing a longer journey, obviously just set that to 100%, that then gives you the full range of the battery available. And driving tips just gives you some uh, ideas of how you might want to drive more economically. Press the four square button again. Uh, the next option is skill tree. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but basically this gives you a manual, but in a form which is more graphical. So. Uh, we can, for example, click on entertainment and then that will take us to online multimedia. And then we can see from that radio line and that will explain all of these different features. So if you're um, wanting to find out what these things are, you just scroll around and use this tree. So we can have a look through smart vehicle account. I need to log in. 
uh, facial recognition. Uh, so it explains all of these different features. Privacy mode, like I said, the privacy mode which is set on the uh, driver's display here, um, basically stops your history being shown. Kids mode. So this is interesting actually. This is a thing that's built into the car. If you've got young children, you know, toddlers that are struggling to sleep and th things, it can put on some white noise or some uh, other settings. So if we, if we, that's accessed by swiping down the top here. This has been brought up another shortcut again. Kids mode. And what it's going to do is it's going to it give us the option of background music. So we've got none at the moment. If we choose music box. It gives us a sort of um, lullaby music. Forest, bonfire gives us a crackly sort of forest, uh, crackly wood sort of sound. Ocean is like a lapping wave. And rainy day kind of makes me want to go to the toilet, to be honest. Um, but we've got uh, what you can do is you could leave the car, you could leave the car parked up, but with the, the you know, that sort of thing playing so that the child didn't necessarily then um, wake up straight away because they'd have some sort of white noise playing. Um, we've got uh, vital signs monitoring, so the alarm comes on if it senses that if you turn off the vehicle and exit the car and it, sen it senses that there's someone in the back seat still, you know, because you've forgotten your child or your dog, uh, that can warn you um, and uh, it pings you on the app to say that you've you know, sensing something in the vehicle, but also it can set the alarm on as well so that other people would come and, uh, come and look. Sun shields and noise reduction, so basically when that's selected, uh, the windows close automatically. Um, so if the windows were down and then we enter kids mode, it'll put the windows back up. Um, and it also turns down all the system setting sound so that you don't have the, as, you know, so it'll turn the volume down on the radio and so on. Um, and that's under the volume control as well there. So it'll try and make sure that your children are as comfortable as they possibly could be. So that's uh, so that's kids mode. Uh, that's quite cool. Just to show actually again on this pull down. So from the top of the screen, if you pull down, you've got access straight away to change the navigation volume, the media volume, the screen brightness. Uh, we can change um, on here as well. We've got uh, Bluetooth on and off, wireless LAN on and off. Uh, we can put the 360 cameras on there. Um, and these are quite cool actually. If you put it on 3D mode, we can actually Swivel all the way around the car. The camera clarity is actually really, really good on this. Uh, transparent chassis basically means that you can see through the car. Uh, auxiliary view. This shows uh, the left wheel uh, and the right hand side uh, wheel of the car. Uh, we can look at the back or the front. So we've got the front wheels turning there versus the curbs. Click to the back, we can see the black back wheels so we can see how well we're parked inside this space. We can also, if you're parking up against a curb, you can see where the curb sits versus your wheels, which is quite useful. So that's on tire view, or we can do it on driving track perspective. So this uh, effectively is, allows us to select uh, like a reverse camera view from top down, zoomed in. So that's effectively showing this view here. Um, if we're in drive, it would show the forward view. So that's your sort of 3D cameras, and I so say you just sort of um, can turn it around on here, so you can select any angle. And interestingly, actually, if we pop it in reverse uh, and move it on 3D mode, and we have the camera over here, if we move, the wheels actually move as well. Ah, I think that's quite cool. So, uh, last thing to talk about on this four square button, I've got a skill tree. If you slide across E manual, that gives you the full user manual um, on the car basically. So, you can just sit in here and you can read the entire car manual um, as if you're in you know, page one, two, three, or whatever of the PDF. So, we can have a look around the car and that will tell you all these features. If you want to see about a particular system, you can click on it and it will then take you to that section. So that's quite cool. So that's, that's on this home, on this square, four square button up here. But you have to swipe across these icons at the bottom to be able to get there. And it, you'll see as well at the moment, it keeps the previous apps up here. So if you're used to like a Android or Apple mobile phone, you'll see that, you know, these sort of recently used apps are up there as well. 
We've got these buttons on the side here. Obviously, we've gone through the home. We've been through uh, the four square. The next one is just a temperature setting for the car. And when you press that, it brings up this screen. Um, so uh, we've got heating, air conditioning, auto, which just based on the temperature you set and the humidity in the car, it'll automatically adjust the vents and so on. Turn it off if you want to. Um, we can choose the direction of the airflow we want for ourselves if we want to as well. Uh, Demist on, heated rear window on, both of which are done on toggle switches alternatively as well. Fan speed we can change. Um, maybe on set on outside air or, or recirculate. Um, we can choose whether we want it to automatically demist de the front if it senses the temperature is cold. Um, and the other thing on there was to, when the battery is too low, you can turn off, uh, it'll automatically turn off the aircon. So if the battery gets down below, let's say 10%, it can automatically turn off your climate control so at least you get to a charger rather than obviously being sat in a car which eventually will go very cold because it's got no battery. Um, so oh, probably on here, easy thing to do is set a temperature you feel comfortable with and just press auto and then that's going to adjust the fan speed and everything else accordingly. We've also got the fan button here which brings up the whole display itself. Uh, in addition we've also got our little shortcut uh, button which I've set on the right hand steering wheel so press that. Uh, and it's going to bring up that uh, automatic climate control function as well. So there's multiple ways you can get into the climate control. The last button down here, the car button, that brings us back into that car settings menu. So that's where we can access things like um, all of the ADAS features and so on. Okay. So those are our icons on the right hand side of the dashboard. That's everything to show you really on, on this centre console area. Uh, we're going to move down now and show you what the other um, switches and buttons do. So only a few toggle switches in the car. This one on the left here is for the rear demister. This one's for the front demister. This one's for the air conditioning function. Uh, literally drying the air or cooling it down. Because it's possible to have the, the airflow on uh, without the heater, without the aircon, just have effectively having ambient air blown in. That's more efficient. But usually in the UK, you're either too cold or too warm. So air conditioning can be set there. And then that's on off for the actual fan, effectively. So that's just on and off there. So a bit low down here, we've just got the two USB sockets. Uh, the one on the right is for charging only. The one on the left can be used for playing media, uh, audio files and video files and so on. So that's the one you use if you're using USB media. And we've got a 12 volt socket here for any auxiliary functionality we might have. We've got two cup holders. Further up here on the centre console, we've just got our drive mode selector, uh, which is a rotary dial, so you just put the foot on the brake, twist it to D, or you twist it left for neutral and then reverse. If you want to park, you just press the top in, and that puts P mode park. The handbrake is an electronic parking brake, um, so you can set it or unset it like that. You have to have um, the car in drive to be able to release the handbrake or reverse obviously. Um, a is auto handbrake so uh, what that can do is if you're um, if you're in traffic and you put your foot on the brake it will apply the handbrake or it'll apply the brakes fix so you can take your foot off the brake pedal and you don't have to try and cover two pedals at once you can then just when you want to set off for the hill starts and things like that it's great because you just come to a, a junction at the top of a hill put your foot on the brake, the car holds it there, you don't need to worry about the handbrake or anything else, and it'll just hold it until you put the foot on the accelerator and it sets off. So that's your auto hold. A little bit further back, we've got the wireless QI uh, charging here. Um, we've got a storage device down the side, and we've got some storage under the armrest as well. So on the driver's side uh, dashboard, we've got these four buttons. This mode button is for changing the driving mode, so we go from normal to sport to eco, back to auto or normal. This is for changing the height of the uh, lights. So if you've got your headlights, if you find that they're sitting too high up, you can adjust the angle and down slightly here. This button here releases the boot. So if the car's locked, uh, you press that button, it will release the boot so that someone can get in the boot. And this button at the end here switches the car off. So effectively, there's no ignition key on the car. 
and normally it will turn off everything off when you get out of the car and lock it but if you want to for example sit in the car for a period of time without all the screens on without the headlights and everything on if you press this button it'll power down everything um, apart from the apart from the driver's display until you close and lock the door so that means it turns off all the headlights and everything like that um, so yes, those those four buttons there. So again, if you get into the car with a key and you put your foot on the uh, brake, the car sp switches back up again. Hopefully, you found all that useful. Uh, if you'd like more information, please contact the Chorley Group today. Mm -hmm.